On this occasion, I am going to explain in detail about the pneumatic timer. What is its internal configuration like, how does it time without the need for electrical energy and more. So, stay and watch this video because I will explain everything to you here. To understand better, let's focus on this type of pneumatic timer that is on delay. This timed block requires a contactor for its activation. On the front there is an adjustment knob which we can turn to adjust a delay time between 0.1 second and 30 seconds. It also consists of an actuator which, if pressed, allows us to perform the timing test manually. On the back, it consists of a retractable latch which is anchored to a contactor for operation. To adjust the delay time, we must turn the number to the top which is the position where it indicates what time we have adjusted. Every pneumatic timer has connection terminals that are auxiliary contacts that operate in the control or command part. Contact 5556 is normally closed, while contact 6768 is normally open. We can appreciate the contacts it has inside. If we turn to see the side view, we can see the other elements that make up the pneumatic timer. Be careful that the necessary elements that allow timing are shown here, since the real device may be a little different from what is shown in this video. The parts we have here are the following. The metal sheets that make up the contacts. A bellows that helps regulate timing through air. The retractable latch which at one end is anchored to the contactor for its operation. When the contactor coil is energized, it then allows the timer latch to be pulled. Therefore, the bellows deforms and travels a certain distance until it activates a small lever, which allows the contacts to change state, that is, contact 5556 opens and contact 6768 closes. From this side it can be seen that the normally closed contact remains open, while the normally open contact is closed. These contacts will remain in that position as long as the contactor holds the latch. If the retractable latch is released, then it allows the bellows to be retracted and left in the initial conditions. But how does it do the timing? Let's see in more detail what the bellows contains inside. When the latch is pulled, the bellows travels a distance before causing its contacts to switch, the time it takes is the timer delay. This bellows has a spring inside which pushes the moving tip downwards, but the bellows is what prevents the spring from pushing very quickly, this is due to the suction of air in the bellows. When you turn the knob to set another delay time, what it does is change the tension in the spring which can cause it to push harder for a shorter time and less force for a longer delay time. When the latch is retracted, it pushes the moving tip back to its starting location. And this is how a mechanical pneumatic timer works. That is why it is said that no electrical energy is needed to carry out the timing, since it works by spring deformation and air in the bellows chamber. This device, due to its limitations, cannot delay the timing for a long time. For this, other types of timers are used, such as electrical and digital electronic ones. All this was already explained in other videos, the link in the description and at the end. The symbology for the on-delay timer is this, although the contactor coil is missing here, since, in other types of timers, its symbol can be found in this other way. In a circuit, we can find these symbols somewhat differently since the normally open auxiliary contact is mostly used. On the left side is shown a circuit with an on-delay timer, known by its abbreviation TON. This allows connection to the circuit by switching its contacts after a certain time after the activation signal has been generated. If we close the S contact to energize the K coil, then the connection delay time begins to time. When this time is up, the auxiliary contact K switches and closes to allow current to pass and energize the indicator H. If we open contact S to de-energize the coil, Contact K of the timer immediately changes state and disconnects the circuit, since it only acts at the time of connection but not at disconnection. 
Disconnection Delay Timer, known by its abbreviation, TOF. It allows the circuit to be disconnected by switching its contacts to their default state after a certain time after the deactivation signal is generated. As mentioned from the beginning, this type of pneumatic timer requires a contactor so that it can pull and retract the latch. In a contactor, there are slots on the front, in which the timer block is placed. This device is placed over the contactor and slides into the slots until the latch engages with the contactor holder. Some contactors come with a cover, which must be removed to place the timer block. You must ensure that the timer latch engages this moving part, which will allow it to be pulled when energizing the contactor coil. Let's look at a small circuit to make use of this connection delay timer. This will require two buttons, a normally closed stop button and a normally open start button. We are going to wire the control part, following the diagram shown in this circuit. From the phase, which in our case will be the brown cable, it is taken and connected to one end of the stop button. From the output at the other end it is taken and connected to the start button. And from the remaining terminal it is taken and connected to terminal A1 of the contactor coil. A cable is connected from output A2 and taken to the neutral terminal, which in our case will be the light blue cable. Now, to make the contactor self-retaining and for its coil to remain energized, a cable must be connected in such a way that the normally open auxiliary contact 1314 is parallel to the start button. From the cable that is connected between the buttons it is connected and led to contact 67 and 68 of the timer, which is a normally open contact. And later it is taken and connected to terminal A1 of the second contactor coil. We finish the circuit by connecting from terminal A2 of the second contactor to the neutral wire. So this would be all the connection that needs to be made to test a timer, for example, for a delayed start of an electric motor. The power or force diagram is relatively easy, since you only need to wire the power cables that come from a motor circuit breaker, passing through the main contacts of the second contactor and to the terminal blocks. This will then connect to a motor or any other device that needed a delayed drive. A timer is not only used for delayed motor starting, but is also widely used for motor rotation reversal. If you want to know how to do all that, here at the end I will leave the links to said video. Go and take a look.